Welcome back to Kingdom Huddle. Listen, this week's topic is is something that I feel like a lot of people can relate to. I want to ask you a question. Is it possible to be in the presence of God and be distracted? Is it possible to actually have God in the room with you and yet you're busy doing other things? I used to hear this saying that be careful who you entertain because you might be entertaining an angel. A lot of times we're going through life, just zooming through life, but never really stopping to understand the power of a moment. That in a moment, your whole life can be altered. In a moment, you can have a, a special encounter. But if we're not careful, if we don't manage our distractions, we can miss the special moments that God want to have with us. So stay tuned. We are going to talk about managing your distractions and understanding the power of a moment. Welcome back to Kingdom Huddle. I hope you all are doing well. Thank you for tuning in. I heard this statement or read this statement many years ago that says that good is the enemy of great. Good is the enemy of great. What in the world does that mean? Well, for me, as a Christ follower, what that means is translation. There's a lot of times that we will say like, I want to do this for God. This is a good thing, God. I want you to put your stamp of approval on it. I'm doing this for you. That's good. But what God would rather us do is to do things with him. That's where the great part comes in. When you do things with God, there's a special anointing and timing and rhythm that everything is just flowing like it should. Not saying that you won't have some issues, but God gives you the energy to continue on the journey. You know, so I was reading um, during my study and this FYI. This um, huddle is going to be a bit of a teaching moment, but I was doing my study and during my study, it's like the words was jumping off the page and it wasn't anything new that I read. I'm a church girl. I've heard pretty much all the stories in the Bible in different forms. So it wasn't anything new, but it's just, it was like four words that just captivated me. And I really want us to talk about it. So I'm going to go straight to those words and then we can dig in a little bit deeper. So the words that I'm talking about is found in the playbook in the book of Luke chapter 10 verses 38. And it says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted. But Martha was distracted by all the preparation that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself tell her to come help me martha martha the lord answer you are worried and upset about many things but only one thing is needed mm. mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her Like I said before, the the playbook is good, y'all. The word of God is so good. When I read this story, like I said, it wasn't new to me. But the words that like literally jumped off the page for me was, but Martha was distracted. She was distracted. How can you be in the presence of God, but yet be distracted? distracted what Martha was doing wasn't bad she obviously somebody come and visit you you're busy um, with the 
the details, the cooking, the cleaning. And back then when a guest came, you or had a servant to go and wash their feet. So you had to draw a lot of water and you know, it was a lot going on. And I can understand Mary's frustration, her wanting to be a perfect host. And maybe Mary suffer, suffer from what a lot of us suffer from, perfectionism. So maybe she wanted everything to be perfect. And here goes sis, sitting at his feet, chilling, chilling. Mary, do you not see your sister about to lose her mind trying to do all this stuff and you sitting at his feet? And I believe that maybe she might have been the only woman among all those men sitting at his feet. And after I read this, I had some questions. I go, the, that's your sister. And from my reading, it seems like it's your little sister. Can't you just go to her and say, girl, get up and come help me. We got stuff to do. We can talk to him later, but let's make sure that we, we do a good job here. Why, why does she have to get the Lord involved? Why did she have to go to Jesus and point out the fact that Mary wasn't doing anything? Why? Because Martha is like many of us. There's situations that come up that we could easily resolve by going to that person or, or easily handle ourselves. But we want to get the Lord involved. We want to get everybody else involved. And I talked about that in the who's in your huddle. So Martha was kind of like trying to rag her sister in front of the Lord. And I love Jesus because he just doesn't operate the way that we operate. It would have made sense for him to say, you know what, uh, Mary, you and I can talk later. You can listen to what I got to say later, but you need to go help your sis. She's overwhelmed. But Jesus always operating in the spirit. Jesus nipped that whole situation in his bud and he was just like, you know what? Martha, what you're trying to do is a good thing, but your sister has chosen the better thing. And he said that, I'm not gonna take that moment away from her. I was just like, oh my goodness. Mary, this girl understood the power of a moment. She never allowed not one moment to be wasted. She was in the presence of God and she didn't take it for granted. Yes, she could have been cooking. Yes, she could have been cleaning. Yes, she could have been serving. But she said in this moment, when the Lord walks in, everything stops. Everything stops. And that's the way that we have to operate. When God moves in, when Holy Spirit is in the room, all distraction must cease. Mary gave herself permission to be fully present in the moment. We have to be mindful of the things that we're doing, even though they're not bad things, even though we say that God wants us to do this. Don't forget that being at God's feet, at Christ's feet is the best position. It's never wasted time when you sit at the Lord's feet. Mary said that I'm going to glean all the wisdom in this moment. I'm going to give you eye contact to let you know that I'm fully present. And even to go further, it said that she sat at his feet. She wasn't standing up or, or looking on her, nowadays looking at her phone or texting or tweeting or doing anything. She was sitting, resting at his feet. When's the last time you rested at his feet? When's the last time when the presence of God was so thick, you stopped and you fully surrender to that moment? I've been at events, church events, church services, where for me and so many others, we could feel the presence of God. It was so thick. It's like you could cut it with a knife. It was so thick. Yet in that same moment, there were individuals who were distracted. 
How can you be looking on your phone? How can you be looking around? How can you not have any emotion when God walks in the room? We are distracted. We have to be careful because every moment matters. It may seem like no big deal, but every moment matters. I remember hearing this saying that be careful who you entertain because you could be entertaining an angel. How many times this week could you have entertained an angel, but you were too busy on your phone? You were too busy watching Netflix. You were too busy on social media. You were too busy doing work for God, not with God. I love Mary because this is the same Mary in the other parts of the Bible where it says that Jesus was reclining at the table with some of his disciples and some others. And he was at the home of um, Simon the leopard. And a woman walked in with an expensive bottle of perfume. It was so expensive that it was worth a whole year's wage. And she came in and she broke that bottle and she took the perfume and she put it all over Jesus from his head. Just anointed him with this perfume. And then she took her hair and wiped his feet with it. This woman understood the power of a moment. Mary wasn't sitting at Jesus' feet because she was checking him out. Mary wasn't sitting at Jesus' feet because she was lazy. Mary wasn't sitting at Jesus' feet to ignore, uh, to ignore the need of her sister. Mary says, I understand who you are. I'm willing to give you the reverence that you deserve. I'm willing to give you the respect and honor that you deserve. So she said, everything is secondary in this moment I may not have this moment ever again so I'm going to take it all in thing that I know about the adversary the enemy devil Satan is that he can't stop us from being successful he can't stop us he know that he can't stop us but what he will do is distract us and he will distract us with busyness he will distract us with things that seem good. There's no harm in it. There's no harm in the fact that I'm on 10 committees. These committees are helping the community. But if you get to a point in your life where spending time with God is optional, be careful. Be careful. Where, where you're rushing out of the presence of God because of your agenda, be careful. Be careful because busyness will kill you. Busyness will distract you. Busyness will cause you to become judgmental. Busyness will cause you to become frustrated like Martha. Martha started to become judgmental of her sister because Martha was so distracted and frustrated and worked up. And it annoyed her that Mary was at peace. Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus at peace and Martha was about to lose her mind. So Mary's peace was annoying Martha. Don't lose your peace in the process of doing something good for God. We have to understand that when Jesus walks in the room, nothing else matters. That's the time that you drop everything, everything. Some of you all have been so busy that, that you don't even remember the last time that you really just sat in his presence. Can you go a week without distractions? You need to manage your distractions. You need to reprioritize your life. Because if you feel like a rush, you go to church, you watching the clock. You're so focused on everything but God. You in the choir singing to God, but not even thinking about God. 
How is it possible to be in the pulpit preaching about God, but not thinking about God? How is it possible to make videos about God, but not have a relationship with God? To, to make it seem like it's optional. It's optional, God. You know I'm busy. I'm doing this YouTube thing for you, God. I'm busy, God. No, I'm doing things with God. And a lot of times people won't understand that. Sometimes there are seasons where God is saying, clear your plate. I don't want you to do nothing unless I tell you to. So every day, wake up and sit before me. Sit at my feet and get your instructions every day. Are we willing to do that? If we're not willing to do that, then we're wasting our time on this earth. We're wasting our time calling ourselves Christ followers when we can't make time for Christ. I really want us to understand that every moment matters. Slow down. Look at the trees. We're in fall, my favorite season. Look at the tree. The, the leaves are changing colors. Take a moment. Instead of snapping pictures, selfies of yourself, snap some pictures of the creation of God. Get back plugged in with God. Go for a drive where you have no agenda just to be in the presence of God. Let's not waste this gift that's called life. God is calling us to his feet. He's calling us to sit in his presence. You're never wasting time when you're sitting at his feet. And I hope and pray that if you are being more of a Martha in a season where Jesus is calling you to be like a Mary, I pray that you make the adjustments. I pray that you do things with God and not just for God. And understand when you're doing things with God, you're not gonna miss anything. You're not gonna miss out on anything. There are some people who are afraid to release themselves from their schedule and their agenda because they don't wanna miss anything. They feel like they need to be a part of everything. Only do what God's calling you to do. Only do what God is calling you to do. Sit at his feet. Continue to tune in to Kingdom Huddle. We are so excited about what God is doing. And I'm hearing some awesome feedback and testimony of people who, because of God's prompting of me starting this, that God has touched their hearts to the point there. There are some people who are no longer operating in fear and they started that business that they always wanted to do. I thank God for that. I thank God for some people who, um, with me being transparent and talking about you know, some things that I have dealt with, with shame, that they feel encouraged to no longer walk with their head down and, and feeling that burden of shame. God is doing some great things. As I stated in my last video, this is not just videos, it's ministry. It's ministry. And you continue to just tune in, continue to share this information because if it's feeding you, make sure you share with others as well so they can get fed as well. But I thank you for your support, for all your love, all your, your, your comments, your encouragement. It's not wasted because when you put yourself out here like this, it's vulnerable. It really is. It's vulnerable. And people that you expect to be support you don't always support like you would like them to. But it's not about people. It's about purpose. So I pray that you continue to stay tuned. And um, I love you all. See you soon.